The intensity is amazing. Woo! The concentration phase. Hey. Oh. Oh, Doing a bit of sailing. Welcome to the story of two sailors taking the long way home to Australia on a 38-foot boat called Finding Avalon. Subscribe and join the voyage. Last week he joined us on an impromptu diversion on our sail from Tahiti to Niue due to unfavourable weather. Maupihaa was on the way and seemed like a cool place to hang out for a couple of days. The entrance to the atoll was an extremely narrow pass which left us a bit shaken. I'll tell you a secret. I haven't actually been scared on this trip often. But that I was so terrified. But we'd do it 1,000 times over to explore this beautiful place again. So Jackson's got this face that I call breakfast face because in the morning he's not really a morning person and he just stares into space for about an hour he'll be in a trance and he'll just, just sit eating his breakfast just and if you put anything in front of him he'll read it so if you put like a fa like you know the facts on the back of cereal he'll like did you know that a millipede can live for five years? There you go. Fact of the day for you. So, um, the reason I'm talking about breakfast face <laughs> is because I just witnessed it. It's 5 a.m. It's dark. What are we doing up at this time when we've got a 900 sail ahead of us? We're going fishing with Howie. Our mate that we met yesterday. Howie is one of the locals here that live on the island. He's one of 14 families that live here on the island. And one of 23 people. I was trying to ask him about fishing because he had a few fishing rods. And I was just trying to ask him where he goes and what he catches and eats here. And I'm not sure if he thought I was asking or whether he was just being nice and offered. But somehow it ended in him offering to take his fishing. The only problem was that the rules were that we had to go at 5am. He told us what fish we were catching in French and we obviously didn't know so we thought oh well we'll go and look that up when we get back and we looked it up in our fish book and it's just jackfish. Hmm. We've got up at 5am for jackfish but it'll be really fun. We love Howie, he was so cute. Howie, who we much later on found out was actually Harry, turned up at five o'clock, island time, and proceeded to bomb through that scary pass without even any moonlight. The hand lines hadn't even been out for a minute when we got our first bite. Give me you gotta in. Keep going, keep going there. Pull him in, pull him in. Woo! <laughs> oh, shark! Oh my god! <laughs> what? <laughs> That's why you gotta be quick. Oh, well done, Howie. Woo! Never take a girl fishing. Girls are bad luck fishing, right? No, you're good, you're good. Woo! Look at that! Howie. Jackson! What did you do? That was a big one. Look at that! Yeah. The intensity is amazing. Woo! 
the concentration phase. Oh, oh, shark! Shark! Oh, Howie! Oh, no! Yeah! Again, here we go. On for fish number five. How is an absolute weapon? We've, cha we've actually changed colours of squid three times now. now. I'm on the orange. You're still on pink. But we were on like a black as well. Swap so. that out. Now it's got two sharks. We invited Harry on board for breakfast, and the bloody legend was up for trying a bit of Vegemite. This one's for you because uh, we, we don't use no more. But here, uh, so we give to you. We can't ruin it. Oh, come with you now and then come back. Okay, sorry. We were then invited to Harry's to clean the fish and drink some coconuts. Daya! Bonjour, Daya! Oh, bonjour, my lovely. Harry lives on his own with dog Dyer and cat Winnie. Jackson was stoked about this as cat is the one word he knows in French. The shot. I am my mother's only one. It's enough. How he's seen my uh, billeting skills. Yeah, what does he think? And now I'm back to just scaling. <laughs> oh dear. I actually reckon I did alright. Only love is all. Biggest ones as well. They were, I know. The sharks have good taste in the fish. Harry sent us over with the fish guts to feed his pet sea turtle. I am my mother. Oh, yeah, he's definitely eating it. With this all. I'm moving water shore to shore. Nothing's more. Only love is all You know, 
I don't actually like coconut water that much, but that is delicious. <laughs> Stopping here was the best idea ever. <laughs> this is amazing. This is the best morning. I'm all smiles today. And we've got 10 of these babies to take on the boat with us. Because Howie just keeps on giving. With a huge bag of fish from our generous new friend Harry, we said our goodbyes and headed back to Av. to get you to say if you're downloading the weather. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am downloading the weather. Very good, thank you. <laughs> you're such a good actor. What does it involve for me to download the weather? I press start and then watch. It's a bit like watching paint dry. Can you see the kilobytes there? Mm, there's lots of kilobytes. More kilobytes than uh, you can shake a stick at. I mean kilobytes a second. Back home, we normally have megabytes a second. That's You're been. so spoiled. Despite the grey clouds, the wind's actually back. Yeah, super stoked that the wind's finally here and we get to raise the sails and hopefully do a bit more sailing than we do motoring. The breeze should strengthen throughout the night and for the next few days. It's still gonna be light, it's only gonna be 10 to 15 knots um, for the next three days, and then we should be in some really good breeze and the last few days should be sort of 18, 20 knots. Thanks to my awesome mum, who's been keeping us updated with quite the development out there, uh, there is a pumice raft. Pumice. <laughs> There's a pumice raft out there. Uh, which is basically like an aerated rock that forms when, I'm pretty sure it's from like a volcano, or like a lava flow underground, like, sorry, underwater. And it's basically kind of like the smoke and the ash that comes out of that and forms like these really lightweight rocks. And it's about 50 kilometers wide in circumference. And it's just about, it's just off the coast of Tonga. Luckily it's on the other side of Tonga to where we're going from Niue from what we know, but uh, we were lucky enough to meet the guys on Rome. We met them in the surf uh, when we were in Tahiti and they left a week before us and they actually got stuck in it. So we were about 900 miles to Niue, which is quite a challenge, but it's a lot of miles. Um, but yeah, had an amazing time here. Good to get a good night's sleep last night, have some food, meet the locals, and um, yeah, let the adventure begin, eh? Got to go back through that pass.
Go for it. Doing a bit of sailing. Pretty f good. Until the sails flop. <laughs> oh, you will that to happen. Yeah, I know. Do you reckon give me 10 seconds and I'll tell you how fast we're going? Yeah, yeah, you gotta wait. How about now? Nice bit of breeze filling in now. Six and a half? Mmm, you're dreaming. 5.2. Yes! 5.2 exactly! When you said that, the, G the um, GPS said 5.2. Oh, 5.7. Yeah, we've got a nice little bit of breeze now. I'll take that. Yeah. Let's call it five and a half knots. And we're sailing. Downwind, sailing. Goose wind. So, what do you think of Captain's Choice to stop? Oh, I hate to say it. But you're full of good ideas, you are. <laughs> that was epic. Because you, was... you weren't too keen on it. I just wanted to push yeah. on. I just thought, what's the point in doing a diversion when the aim is to go sailing and go to Niue. Um, but we went to a pretty cool atoll. And I'm just, I'm brimming. Uh, that's just kind of put me in a good mood for the rest of the week, I think. Yeah, I've got lots of energy for the sail now. Saw lots of cool animals and um, yeah, we've got some good wind as well, so. Fridge is full of fish. Fridge and freezer are full of fish. So We're, what do we do? We better not catch another one. Put the fishing rods out. <laughs> Jackson's so intent on catching a wahoo. Yeah. So he's trying everything. Like. I'm really into my fishing at the moment. I I'm think we both are, really. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, yeah, last time we caught a wahoo, um, it, Jackson nearly died, so. Um, Eve's, I think the adrenaline has kind of really made it, it's given him a thirst for it. So, well, here's what we're going for today. Um, we've put out a silver and red lure. So, let's see what happens. That was really Catch you later, fun. little reef. Bye, little reef. Yeah, honestly, I just wanted to say to anyone who is doing this circuit and didn't get a chance to go to the two emotus. You can redeem yourself by going here. It was honestly the best of every motu in the two motus that we did. It had the amazing diving and sharks of Fakarava. It had just the pure serenity and um, really long white sand beaches of Apataki. And it didn't have the surf of Apataki. It didn't have the surf of Apataki, but um, not everyone's a froth dog like you. Yeah, sure. And it had the palm trees of all of the motus and just the wildlife. So, and the pass really wasn't that bad. I know we made a big song and dance out of it, but no, that <laughs> pass was gnarly. It was gnarly, but um, it's pretty. Even after doing that pass once, I would still every time I'd have to enter that pass, I would still have heart in mouth. Yeah, true. But it's a lot deeper than it looks. And it's not about just, the depth, it's about the width. Yeah, I was going to say, if you just hold your line and make sure you're going on the right tide, which we didn't because it was a last minute decision, so we hadn't downloaded the tides, but we got lucky that time. Um, but then it really is so worth it. Do it, guys. Thanks for joining us this week. If you heart these vids and want to help us keep producing them, it really helps us out if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Join us next week as we sail 900 miles to Niue and try to teach you guys a few things about long passages along the way.